If you've followed our previous two videos on suspension joints, you're now an expert when it comes to choosing the right style. But what about size? Let's go over common sizes based on application and arm you with the right information to choose. For a lifetime heim, rod end, or johnny joint, you're going to have to choose some drop down menus based on the thread size. The first is thread direction. Right hand is standard thread or clockwise. Left hand is reverse thread or counterclockwise. The reason we often choose one right hand joint and one left hand joint is for adjustment. You can simply crack the jam nuts loose, then grab the bar and spin it in the car to shorten or extend the length of the link. Another way to look at thread size would be based on application. Half or 5 eighths would be fine on a light duty street rod. 7 eighths or 3 quarter are great for steering on Jeeps and 110 applications. Inch and a quarter for all lower lengths weighing on vehicles weighing over 4,000 pounds. And for vehicles weighing over 5,000 pounds, you want to move from a 7 eighths upper to an inch and a quarter upper. If you've got questions on size, email or call, we'll know exactly what you need for your application. Next up is your bore size. It's a fancy way of saying the inner diameter of your final joint package. Three eighths and half inch again would be suitable for a light duty vehicle or possibly a sway bar. The next sizes up would be nine sixteenths or five eighths bolts. These are great for a four to five thousand pound vehicle. They could come a Jeep on 40 inch tires with a mild motor. If you're larger than the above specs, Run high horsepower or could break a steel ball in a rubber room, three quarter inch bolts are for you. You'll even see some guys are running beyond three quarter, one inch bolts. These would only be reserved for high horsepower, we're talking over a thousand horsepower rock bouncer. Unless you're Tim Cameron or Jake Berkey, three quarter inch is for you. The next step is your mounting width. This refers to the overall width of the assembly completed. Be prepared to choose from common widths of inch and a half, two inch, two and five eighths, or three inch. If your brackets aren't this width, be prepared to modify the spacers or your brackets. At TMR, we strongly recommend using two and five eighths width on all your suspension connections. That way your brackets are modular and you can upsize rod ends in the future. Only have the cash now for a seven eighths rod end? Choose two and five eighths width. That way when you want to upgrade to an inch and a quarter lifetime high in the future after freeing up some cash, you'll be able to do so without having to modify your brackets. Now you're gonna to need to select a tubing adapter. They're available in round, hex, or square. Round is the most popular, followed by hex, then square. If you pull fabricators, most would say they prefer a hex. The reason for this is you've got easy adjustment and you can grab the wrench flats to tighten up your jam. For the tubing adapter, you need to pick one that matches the tubing size you're using. Outside diameter refers to the OD of the tubing. Inside diameter refers to the ID of the tubing. The most critical dimension is the inside diameter, as this is where the tube adapter will slide into the tubing. The outside diameter isn't as critical. It's cosmetically nice if it matches, but if it doesn't, it will still perform fine. But wait, your buddy gave you an awesome deal on some leftover fencing material his uncle had? Good for you. Now throw it out. Purchase DOM tubing that's a proper match for the inner diameter of the tubing adapters. Custom machining is more expensive than proper tubing. Trust me. Now that you've got all the proper pieces selected, you can build your own custom links. That's as simple as bolting the pieces into place on the car, measuring from tube adapter to tube adapter, and welding. Who knew building custom suspension could be so easy? A quick note about welding tube adapters. Never weld the tube adapter to the tubing with the joint installed can warp the threads, seize the joint in there permanently. But take your time welding. This isn't a race to see who can build the fastest link. Standard MIG welding is fine for all these connections. I don't care if your buddy's uncle has some magical TIG rods or mines his own iron ore to build chromoly. It doesn't matter. Now you're even more of an expert and ready to build your own custom links and steering. Happy linking.